You know, we should probably start rolling, don't you think? Let's do it. I think I'm quite big, so we've got lots of um, random things we must check out. I think that was one thing, though, when I came in and watched your class, it sort of almost was a bit of a... Uh, I was going to say an anti-class. It wasn't. It was a very helpful <laughs> class. But you were very much about... Um, I think a lot of people were, like, holding on to a lot of technique. And it was like a lot of what you said was about kind of, like, just focus on the present moment and really just be in the moment, yeah. which I think is so important. But I think so many actors, including myself, struggle with that. Was that a journey for you, like, to, like, work well, on letting go of things? I think lot? um, kind of letting go of wanting to be good is, mm. is a big thing, I reckon. Because we kind of want, want to come up with a good performance and be clever about it and be great at what we do. Mm. And, but that's a kind of a, an objectified standpoint yeah, yeah, yeah and i think probably acting is the most enjoyed and the most but by the actor and the, and the audience when the actor has a subjective experience mm. so that's not about evaluating it that's about being in the moment yeah and usually you know when you have a really good time time flies because you're having a subjective experience and that's why it flies and why you're having such a good time because you know you know you're just living mm. life and i think probably acting's quite simple in a lot of ways i reckon if you can get out of your own way and just be mm. honest and do it. And what do you think, like, what's helped you with that journey? Do you think it's just like putting in the hours and mm. like just starting to let go? Or do you think it's... Yeah, I think to a degree getting over it. Mm. Just getting over, just getting over it. Yeah, yeah. Going, I could sort of take it or leave it, but I quite enjoy it, so I'll just keep doing it. Yeah. When I was desperate to do it, and really ambitious and wanted to get somewhere, have it make an impression or whatever that, whatever that means, you know, mm. that, that doesn't really mean anything. But we think it does. It means a lot to actors, I don't know yeah. why, but when you get past that sort of stuff, I think you get into a zone, or at least I did, I got into a zone where I was just freer. I wasn't trying to be, I wasn't trying to be good, I was just trying to do it or something. Did that kind of come from like industry stuff? Like you were starting to realize maybe just how hard it was or oh. things weren't happening. You just went, well, who cares? Let's no, just I, I think I got to a point where I was thought, oh, this is a lot of, sh this is just a lot of crap. Like it's, mm. it doesn't, <laughs> it's quite illusory. Mm. You know, it's, it's not, what, what, what does the work really mean? Well, it's, it's a subjective experience for everyone. It's what it means to each person. But mm. ultimately it's just an experience. It's not, it doesn't amount to anything. Mm. And I think, Mm. Um, so letting go of the, like I, the outcome of everything. Yeah, when I I think when I embraced that it was sort of meaningless and it was just sort of, okay, it was, it was an experience and it was you know there was nothing to actually get or to do. Mm. Um, once I and they're quite kind of abstract, I suppose. It's you kind of go, oh, what is success really? What is you know whatever? And what is it really? You know, mm. I don't know. It's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> and finally, it's doesn't exist yeah so where what what does keep you doing it then what what do you find in it oh uh, the joy of doing it is great so i think the, the one of the classes you came into um we were doing a whole lot of immersive take no responsibility for the scene take mm. no responsibility for driving it or just be in it and explore it for its own sake um and what was happening was where people were people the actors were embracing themselves rather than a notion of character. They were embracing a truth mm. and embracing the truth and not trying to come up with any performance, they're just sort of being in it. The character would emerge. And so, you know, you've got, when, as an actor, when you embrace the character, you, that's what you want to do, you want to embrace the character. And the audience just see an actor embracing a character, but that's, that's what they see. But if the actor just embraces himself and is true, then the audience see a character. Mm. And that paradox is, just brilliant, I think. And it, we kind of go, our subconscious mind tends to understand the scripts far greater than our conscious mind. And when people don't try and do any acting and they just try to be true and in, in the moment, all sorts of themes resonant with thematic mm. resonances from the script tend to come out. And you go, I don't know how this is happening, but that is, you are the character, although you're just being you and being truthful. Yeah. And that I find, I find it almost mystical, actually, that that we there's this unconscious unknown zone that you kind of drop into and take no responsibility for you and you don't try and drive it you don't try and take care of it you don't worry about 
being in it even. Mm. You just and things show up. And I saw I mean, it. Yeah. I don't know. No, it was it was great. And that was probably one of the the things I wrote down when I was auditing the class. I wrote down so many fantastic quotes, but it was don't take responsibility for the drama of the scene, I think you put it. Like don't yeah. it's sort of just not trying to like don't control be, it and to yeah. sort of lead it and bring well, a character. Because yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because I suppose in actors we're always trying to kind of be dramatic. Mm. So you get a scene and you want to be dramatic about mm. it. You want it to be like really the shit, man, like yeah. meaningful fucking, my God, you know. But in life, whenever you're like, are you okay? Everyone's like, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, We don't go, you know, I'm not great, man, you know. You, we don't, we never do that in life. <laughs> you know? There's a couple of actors and, I know. Yeah. Probably, but yes. you know, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I was just trying to go, you know, like, so can we, you know, if you, we're trying to sort of solve drama in life, not build it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Try to flatten so it all true. out yeah, and yeah. just be like, no, it's all cool. And um, that's sort of, when you apply that to dramatic scenes, it feels like it's a more interesting choice. Yeah. And it also, there's something about um, when actors don't know, not what, when they don't, when they aren't driving the scene and taking care of where it's going and where they're going, when they just let it go, then they sort of forget where it's going and they don't know where it's going. And it's far more dramatic and exciting mm. for the audience. Because the audience is watching two people or three people or eight people or one person who's on an adventure mm. and hasn't determined where they're going, which is really drama. All drama is kind of, got, it's, that's the essential component, yeah, yeah. isn't it? So, um, so how do you then, yeah, yeah. No, totally. But, and, and I saw that in the class, but I was wondering how, how do you balance that? Because we were talking before we started rolling about this Seinfeld scene that you're working on, which is nine pages long, very yeah. technical. Yeah. And I think so many actors, you're absolutely right, need to let go of things. But there is a level of like, if you do a Seinfeld scene or a very technical Shakespearean scene, perhaps, or something, where you're just, you know, completely letting, or maybe you can trust completely letting go. But well, do you, where does technique come in or what is technique? Well, but some, it, it means different things to different people, I think. Because mm. some people that are really very much in their heads that find, find Seinfeld's, the Seinfeld scene that we, we were working on really much easier mm. because it's highly technical. Seinfeld stuff is really hard. I mean, it's so fast mm. and there's a joke or a setup for a joke, kind of every line. Yeah, yeah. And this scene is like nine pages. So you'd like, it's easy to do four, but then, you know, do four and keep it going on the same subject matter and not let it drop and mm. keep getting laughs and you realize how hard it is. Um, so the people that were are more in their heads found that easier to do mm. and more rewarding because they could, it was easier for them to go, I, I know I need to hit this note here and do this here and this is a setup and that's the punchline and then I need to come in and they can keep that kind of mm. mechanism going. And that's part of the animal when you're doing that kind of high comedy. Yeah. When we were doing high comedy, part of you is a stand-up comedian, I think. You're telling mm. jokes. Like, that's that's the forward movement of the piece in a lot of ways. We're telling jokes, folks. Mm. You know, that's, that's, that's what's driving it. Uh, the people that are less in their heads are more instinctive and emotional, find it easier to be in the dramatic kind of zone where I'm just t kind of feeling it and doing it and having a subjective experience. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's picking so, and choosing it then? Well, like when you, it's interesting to identify w which where you are and mm. therefore when you identify where you are, you know what work you need to do, whether you need to be I really right. to work on a whole lot of technique and stuff. Because once they're on top of the, of the technical requirements for some, the high comedy like Seinfeld, they can all do it. But it just takes some people longer to get there than others because it's you know they've got to stay in their head for so to have to keep all the information running and to keep it going mm. to have all of those technical technical notes you know like the end of this line is a rising inflection and then the note that I hit must mm. set up the punchline that's coming in three lines time like all of that's got to be in your head really isn't it? yeah yeah so well I remember watching Noises Off oh, at okay. SCC which was yeah yeah four, four years ago yeah. Yeah. three or four it's years it's ago it's and it's um, I mean, that, how, how did you find that experience? Because that's like, you've got to be highly technical, well, but high also comedy. very, yeah. yeah. High comedy and um, difficult because, mm. you know, it's all subjective, I guess. What I think is funny, someone else might not think is funny. I like to really um, take something to task and not try and bung on the laughs straight away. I try and go, mm. well, if this is truly funny. This is, It should be intrinsically funny. So therefore, I should just be able to do what, this guy is doing and it hopefully it should end up just being funny because the situation and the characters and what's happening and the interaction is well constructed. Mm. 
So that took a long while to kind of get there for me. Where a lot of the others were kind of hitting the comedy stuff. Mm. To the point where the stage manager, I think the, the second last run that we did in the rehearsal room, because I didn't get on with the director terribly well. <laughs> and he would say, I'd say, I'm not sure how to do this. And he'd get up and do it for me. And I'd go, that doesn't help me because I still don't know how right. I'm... I'm not saying I don't, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it. I'm just saying I'm, I wonder how this works, really. Mm. Anyway, so it was very difficult. So the, the second last run in the rehearsal room, the stage manager came up and she hugged me and she said, this just hasn't worked, has it? This just hasn't worked. And I was just like, far out. Wow. This is full on. Um, and, then, and then the last two runs were really good. Yeah. Um, do you think and that you were actually better. doing good work and people just had an audience to see it? I was in a yeah. process and they, it was, yeah. it was, they weren't seeing it as a process. Yeah, yeah. They weren't seeing it as a process. So yeah. it was freaking them out, I think. <laughs> they, I think they just like, thought... Because you're going to learn your lines? I, yeah, no, I knew my lines. Are, I just, just <laughs> yeah. you know. But also, I've done heaps and heaps of comedy. Yeah. Um, and quite high comedy too. Like, I used to do pub theatre. when I, Before mm. I went to drama school, I used to get up in pubs in Perth and do, like, stand-up and stuff. Mm. Uh, and do skits and all that sort yeah. of thing, and then and I've done like Rocky Horror and that's which is kind of high camp, high comedy mm. uh, s stuff, a lot of physical comedy. So I wasn't worried about my own comic ability. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, no, I'm backing myself. I just need to work out what's going on, how this works. And yeah, yeah. But so so anyway, so it was a bit tricky. It was a lot of tension. Yeah. Doing that show. Um, it was a lot of tension. Well, I enjoyed it, so it obviously came oh, together thanks. very well. But but and I do find yeah. that comedy is actually there. it's it's far it's a, like if you if you go and meet some people on the road, they're on the touring something. If they're touring a tragedy, they'll be having the best time. They'll be so kind of connected, mm. and they'll be drinking every night together, or they'll be cooking dinner with each other, or they'll be, you know whatever they'll yeah, be like. Yeah. You go and visit some people that are in a comedy on the road. They hate each other. They fucking can't stand each other. They're yeah. like, there's all these, you know all these agendas running under the surface there's yeah. all these tensions isn't there I think it's the same in the rehearsal room as well when the same so. situations because you're it's doing it it's like hell and yeah. I know and like you know running classes you know you work on a comedy scene and people it's just really hard yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's a cliche but the, the drama is easy yeah. in yeah. a kind of a way because you just just be honest and be you yeah but comedy be honest be you and make them laugh yeah <laughs> how do you navigate not getting on with the director Mm. Or being at odds with a director. I don't know. It's not a nice <laughs> feeling. Like it's not a nice feeling. Yeah. It's not something I enjoy. I never set out to do that. Mm. I think. Um, but this guy particularly was someone that mimicked a very good mimic. Right. And I just couldn't let that happen. I just couldn't go down the road of. As in, he was uh, expecting you to mimic. He, what when he was I was doing. You're trying to, you know, you're trying to solve. Acting is solving problems. What am I doing in this moment? What should I? Maybe I'll try this. Maybe I'll try that. And then, you know, when I. When I we were trying to solve problems, he would be the one to get up and perform it. Right. And he would perform all the roles because he was a, a performer as well. Like, um, yeah. You know, he does a lot of um, cabaret sort of stuff. Sure. So he wasn't, it didn't have an actor's process really. He sure. A, he had a, a, a um, stand up comedian mimic kind of uh, review type. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we work very, very differently, and we did end up saying to each other, "Look, we work very, very differently." You know, mm. and you know, we, at least we acknowledge that. But I was playing a director in it, mm. and so I would sit. You know, like, they'd be rehearsing, and I'd be supposed to be the director directing them, but he's really the director. And I would sit and try and get a vibe for like you know, and he would, he would. I think he would get threatened, and I'm like, I, I'm. Kind of actor director. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to steal your role. I'm not trying to go, you know, I go, hang on, how shouldn't, and, you know, sorry, I shouldn't have suggested anything. So, like, I sh you know, yeah. it became very tense, and rehearsal rooms shouldn't be like that. Mm. I don't think. I think it's the collective creative mind is always greater than the singular, and you hire good people, and you, you, you mm. want to hire them and be threatened by them. You want to hire them and, like, you know. Do you think navigating it, though, is about, like, trying to work with them or is it now the more you do it is it like sticking to your guns like oh. what's your what's your approach to it do you kind of go um, well actually this is what i want to do and this is all i've got or do you do you have any kind of thoughts on like what an actor would do in that situation if you are kind of feeling at odds with the director yeah you know, looking back on it you've just got to try and it's a really uncomfortable and unfortunate situation and no i don't suppose any director would hire an actor if they thought they were going to have problems with them mm. um 
and that. But some actors would take a job with the director knowing they were going to have problems with them because they wanted the job, mm. I suppose. Um, it's sort of tricky, isn't it? Like, mm. I think each job is different and each director, each relationship might be slightly different. And mm. it's, I mean, it's great to work with people that are of like mind. It's great to work with people that you've worked with before and there's a great deal of trust. Therefore, when a solution isn't immediately... Um, present it doesn't freak everyone out and send them into like um, damage control mm -hmm. which is it seems you know you, you, you sort of want a confident relaxed open creative rehearsal room don't you so that mm -hmm. you can discuss things so that you can be it you can go no no I don't think that at all hang on unless we can have a discussion where we don't agree with each other how can we ever get to a point and I don't mean like on an ego kind of and that means I've got power or you've got power it just means mm -hmm. I'm just looking at it differently. Isn't that, art, isn't that an artistic dis dis discussion? Is, is to actually go, hang on, I, what's your perception of it? Well, this is my perception. What are, what's our understanding? Where are we trying to get to? What does this mean? What can we, how can we both feed into this? Mm -hmm. Like That's a creative um, relationship and, and, and process, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes things can get so kind of uh, structured into a power grid to a mm. pyramid fucking grid that you know it becomes subordinate to, to kind of go to, to disagree or to say hang on does that work or shouldn't that happen here or you know mm. like that's a it's, it's not it's like yeah. not personal you know yeah. and when things then become personal I suppose when actors and directors don't get on it certainly becomes personal and you've got to try and keep you just try and, and acknowledge that yeah because um, there's no shame in, you know, if we're passionate about what we want to do, and then of course you're going to get, you, I mean, you kind of want that, you know, mm. <clears throat> that people can get, you know, very um, confused about uh, artistic temperaments being driven or difficult, you know, or attention seeking, or that those sorts of things get, can get quite muddy, I think. Mm. And, um, and so it's, it's tricky. Mm. It's definitely tricky, and it's not for the faint-hearted. And you've got to mm. be able to put yourself on the line and say stuff, don't you? And, mm. uh, and, and, I, and I guess the other side of it is that you know actors are all kind of competing against each other, and so we're always this, this you know we're frenemies. There's so many frenemies. Mm. You don't really kind of know. Yeah. You see it as you see it as a competition? Uh, no, I don't. But I ha I certainly see that they see it as such. Right. So, um, mm. you know. And do you think that's... And people, they, people get so threatened by each other endlessly. Mm. I, I find it very difficult to go to, like, the uh, the actors or the logies or anything. Like, to be in a huge group of, of performers, mm. I find it really quite torturous. Because mm. it's... I, yeah. I don't know if that's a, I'm one of the people that, that says so, and anyone else does what they don't say at all. Mm. But it's there's a vibe that is just like wow this is this is this is tough going. No, I think a lot of people feel that way, but I think it's interesting because my quiet hope was that people grow out of it a little bit. I think in certainly yeah. interviewing a lot of much more successful actors, you yeah. it seems like the competitive element disappears mm. a little bit, but mm. perhaps it just well, gets it more to. quiet. And <laughs> yeah, I think yeah it has to. But I, but yeah. what I'm finding is as I look around, so if I go to those rooms now. Like you go to the actors or something, you look around. What you'll see is the ones that are really ambitious and really still believe in all of that, they're mm. the ones that are still in the room. Yeah. And the ones that have started to go, hang on a second, maybe maybe I'll just work on that poetry show rather than do that TV show. Or maybe mm. I'll just... No, I'm not let so much in the room. Yeah. Do you think when you look around that room, having been in the, in the industry for a little while now, is there any commonalities between the ones who you've seen do well in an industry sense or do, do you look at it and go look at people in your class at drama school and go yeah some of the best people didn't get anywhere and it was a large element of luck or do you go actually there have been certain things that have led to people's mm. success yeah and different times in different people's lives mm. you know there was this one guy in my class who was like no, just known for being a terrible actor like he was really great looking Mm. Like six foot two, eyes are blue, you know, mm. just, you know, like a lifesaver kind of way. Mm. And he didn't really work much at all for years and years and years. And then he landed this, he, a great guy, very bright, you know. Don't give away too much here. No, no way. 
And then he got this job in America, and suddenly, from not really having a career at all, to just being like one of the richest people I know. You know like, yeah, right. Right, for like six or seven years, I think, series, he just sort of did that. Mm. And the, the role was constructed for a guy that didn't express his emotion very well, was just kind of like a guy's guy, and just cowboy kind of guy, you know. Mm. And it was perfect for him, absolutely mm. perfect. So you go, wow, that's, I'm glad that, ha I'm glad that happened, mm. you know. But do you think you've seen, one thing I'm quietly hoping will happen is that have you seen talent eventually shine through or do you reflect on it and go, actually, it's nuts oh. out there and it's just these terrible actors are getting through oh, here and there. No, 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 that would be too bleak. <laughs> could never agree to that. That yeah. would be too bleak. No, well, I, well what's, who, who's to say what is talent? Sure. There's that. Like what is, you know, like what a, what is... I'm like a really good actor is someone who doesn't do any acting. Mm. You know, the, the best actors are the are the kids and the, the animals and stuff that you work with. Like, mm. they're in front of cameras, they're, they're, they know what they're doing because they're not trying to do anything. Mm. So, therefore, they have the most talent, in one sense. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, does talent shine through? I think tenacity certainly does. Mm. Um, I think drive certainly does. Mm. Drive, tenacity shines through. You've got to really kind of believe in it and want it. And, um, I think people get what they do, get what they need and what they want somehow. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I do. And you think your definition of good acting is not acting? Yeah, I reckon. Mm. Not doing anything. Mm. And yet it's all there. Yeah, it's a funny one because it's one, because I feel in my personality, I've got a great ability. I feel like I'm quite good as a observer yeah and i feel when i hear that note sometimes i feel like i have such a ability to just go to zero and if i just did nothing in a scene i'm not sure how engaging it would be. oh it would be like how do you balance that advice with oh, so i should say a, i should say know, it differently then you, oh, i reckon that a really good actor is not someone who's trying to do anything but that lots happens to sure so, so you're not you, trying to do anything not trying to construct extra. anything to happen to them. Mm. It's not like they're, they're the, a great puppet master of their own puppet. Mm. It's not like that. It's a really good acting, I think, is someone who's present and open. And the, the openness and the, the gap that's provided by not taking responsibility is filled with something, you being affected and something happening to you, and people, mm. you know. And so it's the spontaneity. I mean, with, particularly with cameras. Cameras just love a real moment. Yeah, and mm. you kind of work to, you work to a point where you, you are constructing accidents and it becomes like, wow, that was a magic moment. Did we get it? Did mm. we get it? Is the energy, on, is there a good energy on set? Hey, mm. not, yes, we constructed that and it was perfect and we shot it. And, unless you're doing animation or something like that, that is, you know, but with, mm. with, with people, you kind of want immediacy and truth and honesty and freshness and you want an accident. You want to feel like mm. you captured something that, would never happen again. Um, uh -huh. And that's sort of thrilling, but it's also very simple. And it's also something that everyone does every day. Mm. It's, um, I think we can overcomplicate what acting is and stuff. I, look, I, I, you know, I've done, I did a bit of nudity on stage and people used to say, I did the blue room, right? Mm. And people used to say, well, God, it's so hard. How do you do that? And I go, are you kidding? Like, think about it really. Like it's, everyone is nude every day. It's not a difficult thing to do. It's just your psychological, um, point of view of it. Mm. Just how you look at it. But there's yeah. nothing hard about it whatsoever. I can't believe that people think that's Hopefully there's something. nothing too hard there's on nothing, that, you know. Well, but there's not anything like <laughs> If you have an interest in, an interest in the outcome, I oh know, you're a bad joke. You, if you had an interest in the outcome, yeah. then you are, then it's a really difficult thing to do yeah, to yeah. be naked. But if you don't, if mm. you couldn't care less how it goes, it's, it's do hardly it. a difficult thing to do. So is that, is, do you think the song... I think, I, think, I think acting is the same. I think if yeah. you don't care about how well it goes, if you just... Because we're all acting all the time. You and I are communicating and talking and, mm. you know. So do you think it's just psychological then? If, we, if an actor can shift the mindset of like, mm. caring less about this audition or this performance, then we solved most of the issue? Yeah. Mm. Care less about the success. The success, because I don't know what that means. But... Mm. So that you're present and feeling good. Mm. And then just get over yourself. 
<laughs> you know, and get on with it. And it's kind of so much is there. Mm. Oh, we're wrong. We can keep with the organic vibes and come back up to that little yeah, intermission. Yeah, glitch. Um, well, what actually, I can I can shift gears to a, a fun moment. Yeah. Not a fun moment. No, <laughs> we can shift gears a little bit anyway, <laughs> um, because we're talking a lot about being present, being in the moment. So nowadays, you get an audition or you you know get a role. How much are you doing on your script, and what are you doing on your script, if anything at all? Uh. Um, I suppose I'm looking, learn, reading it, and seeing what's what what uh, what the tenor of it is, what the genre of it is. I suppose mm -hmm. what the feel of it is, because that tells you so much. That gives you so many so many things. Um, and then I just try and learn my lines and and connect to it mm -hmm. within within myself in a true kind of uncomplicated, honest sort of way. Mm -hmm. What's the simplest way I can do it, kind of feel? What, what's just this, if I was to boil all of this down, what's simply happening? Someone's talking to someone else and this happens and then, you know, just get a real basic. So really like understanding what just is happening. basic idea, yeah. yeah. But not not so that it's rigid and hold it, hold, not so that you're holding on to it. I mean, mm. may I say like auditioning is really terrible, terrifying. Ter terrible mm. thing to go through. I don't still think it's, Yeah, I reckon. I've, I've probably been doing it for about 35 years and I still go, oh, do I really have to do this? You know, like, really? Mm. You know? Um, but then I can, I can, you know, be a bit neurotic, I suppose. Mm. Even like for a voiceover or something, I can go, oh, no, go, you know, I go, no, it's, it's going to be all right. Just go. And I'll go and do it and I'll have the best time. I go, mm. what were you worried about? So I think I'm a bit neurotic probably. But, mm. um, but, but still, you're still, you get an audition, still feeling yeah. pretty nervous? I get, I, well, I, yeah, I can do. Mm. I can go in there for an audition and I think, oh, wow, my heart rate's going. It's like 10 minutes before an audition and I'm like, gee, oh, I'm nervous. Mm. Not every time nervous, but. Mm. How do you and, work through that? Like, what's your, well, what's your process for, do you have a process for dealing with that when those, when those feelings come up in the audition room? I think it's detaching from trying to be good, trying to get the job, which is really hard when you want the job. I think it's, I, I find it far more nerve wracking, an audition or a meeting is far more nerve wracking than actually doing the job. Mm. Like mm. I'm at the stage now where I can honestly walk on stage and, and I feel exactly the same as if I'm in the dressing room or at the corner shop or just walk on stage. It's like, it's very normal mm. for me to do it. It doesn't kind of make me, doesn't alter my perform my, my behavior really. I don't get nervous. I don't get nervous. People used to say, once you get nervous, you've lost your edge and it's, it's absolute crap. You're just not nervous anymore. Yeah. But then, you know, sometimes, yeah, you do an audition and just like, wow, okay, I'm nervous. I was not expecting this. I, I don't know. You just have to try and give yourself a break and detach and mm. be present. Not try and do anything. Not try and ex overextend where you are, you know. Not try and, you know, it's, it's tricky, isn't mm. it? Yeah. You know. Yeah, and that's sort of the enemy in the room. Like, if you get a bit nervous and a bit like, I hope I do okay, that's the, that's the elephant, that's the enemy in the room. That's, you're now fighting yourself. And if that wasn't there, how easy would it be? I mean, how easy would it be just to walk in and meet someone? Do I want to work with them or not? What are they doing? What are they up to? It looks really cool. Great to meet you, you know, like, okay, awesome. Like, how? it's not hard. <laughs> it's not hard. So, <laughs> you know, like... Mm. So do you think then for you then, because that's the difference, is it just still wanting to get certain well, roles is what? I suppose we're always in, the, you know, the relationships that we're in as an actor, you're always in a relationship with yourself and that seems to be shifting. You know, it can shift. Well, for me, it can shift depending on, you know, um, doesn't, if you, you can be really feeling a certain way and it, oh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It, it, we are our greatest um, obstacles, mm. I think. We have to be, don't we? Like, yeah. Because when you're out of your own way, it's the most pleasurable and easiest thing in the world. Mm. Um, and you don't sort of mind if people 
didn't like this or did like that. It's sort of like, it's cool, you know, you're allowed to think whatever you like, you know. Mm. But when you're not in that frame of mind, it all seems to be very important and it all seems to be like, no, I really need them to like it and I really need them to get that this is what's going on and I really need, and it's like you're so attached to how it needs to go out there. And I guess that's why we get nervous because we go, am I going to be able to... So it's a control issue, I guess. Mm. It's a control issue and... I guess as we've discussed, that really good acting seems to be being in control of being out of control, of being, you know, some sort of master of, of chaos in some sort of way, to be like, I'm available for things to happen to in this moment, you know. Mm. It, I can be affected, so let's go. Mm. And it it's, seems to be, that's the sweet spot. And, because when you're having a good time and you're in that, in your present and you're not, you don't have a great agenda, you don't get nervous. The nerves come when we are over evaluating and kind of trying to trying to work out how this is going and try and manage it and direct it into an area where our brains will be feel safer and more powerful and more in control and more successful. And I guess that's the trap in itself. Mm. So, do you think probably my final question? And it'd be nice if you have any thoughts here, but. Everything you're saying, resonating with, I think it's so important and, and what I see as well when I'm working with actors. How did you actually, in a practical sense, find that? Do you think it's about working on that in like your, your own life, your personal life, your spirituality? Is it about just doing heaps of hours in class and on stage or screen or whatever? Like what is the, because it, it makes sense, obviously, we're, we're mm -hmm. our own worst enemy, we've got to be more present, we've got mm -hmm. to stop caring about getting these roles. It's very easy to say that. And I know, then you right. haven't had a role for three years and you get a great so audition. <laughs> you go, I've got to get it. I know. And we all know that when you've, you, you don't want the role, you've already got one and you go in for the meeting and you couldn't care less. Mm. That's, the, that's the meeting they go, that guy, that guy, we want that mm. guy. And you're like, really? Yeah. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? But that it gives you the, it gives you, mm. yeah, it's, it's the sweet spot for sure. Yeah. So how do you get there? Well, yeah, do you think, has it just become something... Uh, as you as you do know. just genuinely care less and realize uh, this industry is meaningless as you said earlier yeah. that it maybe you know. maybe it's that it's le it's definitely it's letting go of stuff it's it's asking yourself questions why am i feeling like this what i don't always feel like this why do i sometimes feel nervous or why do i sometimes feel like mm -hmm. you know i'm not good enough why do i sometimes feel like this is not going to work what's happening mm -hmm. and it's the self exploration of such things and the philosophical approach, I suppose, um, because it is kind of all meaningless. It is built on fantasy and illusion and lies. And someone said to me years and years ago, it was Stephen Hopkins, actually, who did 24-7. And mm. he said, Marcus, the sooner you realize that, that this business is built on lies, the better off you'll be. And I just was like, I'm not going anywhere near that statement. <laughs> because I believe in its integrity and what it had to say and what, the, what you know, you work on great plays and they have great themes in them and you kind of go, this is worthy stuff. And so as a young actor, to accept that it was built on lies was was, was the planet that I was, wasn't was travelling to, you know. And now I kind of realise it was the planet that I was always on. But... Mm. And I guess, one, you know, coming to terms with that and going, it is all the construction and people have their own agendas and something, everything is subjective. And if it means something to me, doesn't it mean, doesn't mean it means the same to you? Mm. Or maybe it does. And when it does, that's really great. And when it doesn't, that's cool too, you know. Mm. But it's sort of letting it all go a bit. Mm. It's all, you know, none of it is, none of it is the answer to, and you don't need an answer anyway. Mm. You know, it becomes that. It becomes why are we asking questions? Well, mm. You know, like we, we invented the question to to ask it. You know, so mm. rather than what are all the answers. So uh, when you get to that sort of end of things, then you start. Then it gets easy to just kind of like, well, it's all a bit meaningless, and I don't care. Mm. And I thought you could leave us here for seven hours, and we could just <laughs> go on this one for a while. It's all right. It's everybody yeah. just fractalize, yeah. fractalize, and fractalize, and you know, like. Mm. Yeah. So it's all endless and it's all meaningless and it's all but, good time. Yeah, but no, I think... <laughs> but I think you're right. I think it actually... Infinity. This is what infinity actually looks like. It just actually does not stop ever. <laughs> uh, but at the end of it, 
Yeah. You might get some good acting. At the you end of it. trying not to get No, there's no yeah. end. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Sure. Yeah. That's the whole point. There's no like you get there and there's a pot of gold. At the end of it, you mm. get. You know. Life goes on regardless. There's never like you get to the end of it. I would love to, that we go, oh, look, it's the end of it. Here we get. Now look, hey, we're there. We're at the end of it. Just take a few photos. We're at the end of it. You know, that you're never going to get there. <laughs> There you have it. There you have it. Yeah. I love it. Nice place to finish. It's all built on lies, I think. All built on uh, lies, illusions. Our most uplifting end. No, it's, it's, it's awesome. And uh, yeah, for anyone, I think you get the chance to come and work with Marcus. It's like this. Oh, thanks. For longer. It's lovely. For, for it's longer. For hours on end. <laughs> hours on end. One session, never ends. Though. We did one session. We had so many people turn up because I do free sessions. You just like mm. come and bring your stuff and we'll work on it. And one day we had about 40 something people. We had this session that went for six hours. Wow. And I couldn't stop at five hours because I thought all the people have waited for five hours to do something. I'm not going to say Maybe no. Do six. So we ended up, yeah, we did like this mega, it was like this for six hours. Hilarious. Pretty great though. Um, so rewarding. <clears throat> so lovely. Yeah. You know, just, you know, run a, run a drop in for the sake of, like a drop in for the sake of its own self. Mm. So people just come, bring your work, we'll work on it. And we'll just share each other's work and mm. that's it. Like no money, no, just like, we'll just do the work. No yeah. applause, no performance, just let's just work. And, and they've been really great days, uh, really great yeah. days. And cause Sydney too, we can be a bit disparate and a bit disconnected and a bit competitive and all this stuff, very corporatized. So to kind of be forging a sense of community and connection, I think is really, it feels really good to do it. I know intellectually you kind of go, it's really important to do, but more than that, it feels really great to do. Mm. So Yeah, I love it. And I, and I do, I genuinely think this message is, is important. I think the more actors can let go of that outcome and start yeah. being both yeah. career wise and with their acting moment to moment, I think it's an important message. So it's a much nicer Thank place you. to be. Yeah. Mm. Love it. Cool. Thank you, Marcus. Cheers. Love it. Thanks so much. Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> Do we get it? We got it. <laughs>